subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello and a warm welcome to you, to the Joy Learning TV channel. We say Joy Learning, keep learning. We have a practical physics lesson today, and I'm glad to come your way. My name is Anne Pabi Albert. You can call me Pius. If you have been following us, we had a first lesson on simple pendulum. The aim of that lesson was to find small g, which we call the associated gravity. And we went through the practical work. We took our time to know the things we have to get to know so we could get the practical work done and done well. Today, we'll look at another practical and uh, simple pendulum, but this time it is a little bit involving more than the one that we did the last time. So we're going to look at simple pendulum with a stopper. So it is also a practical work and uh, simple harmonic mo motion. You're going to go through a number of them and a simple harmonic motion. But this time, looking at simple pendulum with a stopper. So you can go back to our first lesson, our practical lesson, and then look at what we spoke about or talked about concerning what a simple pendulum is. So we'll start with the question, which you will have on your screen. From the question, we have three parts, as I told you the other time. We have a diagram. So from the screen, you would see a diagram in the question. In a diagram, we have a split cork. Then we have a length of 100 centimeters. Then we have another length labeled H from A to B. And then the question explains what we should do as per the diagram. So let's go to the question and look at what we have been given as the apparatus. Then we look at the experimental procedure. Then we can move on and look at how to go through the experiment. So it says you are provided with a rotor stand with a clamp. So that's my rotor stand. That's my stand with a clamp. And then a stopwatch. So I'm going to use this for my stopwatch. Then a stopper. So today, this is going to be my stopper. You could have a different thing to be used as a stopper in your lab, but it will all serve the same purpose. So this is going to be my stopper. Then bob, a pendulum bob. So that's a pendulum bob that we have here. And then we are told other necessary apparatus. So I came with split cork, which you can see in the diagram. Two of it. So split cork, two, I'll use them together. Then I have, as usual, my meter rule. A meter rule, one centimeter long or one meter long. Then you will also need an inextensible string. So you will cut the string based on the length of the string given to us. All right. So let us take our time. Go through the question item by item, one by one. Very important. You need to go through the question from the first to the last sentence to understand or get a clear picture of all that you are asked to do. If you don't understand, then you will need help from your supervisor to explain one or two things to you. So you take your time to go to the question, make sure you have a picture of what they're asked to do before you attempt solving the question. So let's start. It says, suspend a simple pendulum such that its length OA is equal to 100 centimeters and maintain it throughout the experiment. This is a very important instruction. If you don't obey it, you won't achieve success in carrying out the experiment. It says that from the diagram, measure a length OA and that length OA should be 100 centimeters. Then it goes ahead to say that maintain this length throughout the experiment. From the diagram, look at the diagram carefully as it appears on your screen. 
OA. O is from the split cork to A, which is the middle of the bob. So we have to tie the string to the bob first before we can measure OA, which is from the point of suspension where you have the split cork to the middle of the pendulum bob. Then it says fix the stopper such that it just touches the string of the pendulum at B while in equilibrium position. Check the diagram again. When we say the pendulum is in equilibrium position, then it means we have mounted it or we have suspended it and it is not oscillating. So it is just suspending. And we are told that the stopper should make contact with the string of the pendulum. So from your diagram, you will see that at a point B, it looks as if the pendulum swings, hits the stopper, and then it moves backwards. Very important. So we're going to have a point along the string where the stopper will be fixed, and it will make contact with the string or with the pendulum as it oscillates. Then it says, set the distance AB equals H equals 45 centimeters. From the diagram, A is from the middle portion of the pendulum to B, so upwards. So you have to be measuring from the middle portion of the pendulum upwards. And that should give you 45 centimeters. Then it says that if we have been able to do that, we should displace the pendulum through a small angle. That is one precaution. So you could say the pendulum was displaced through a small angle. And the reason for that is we want to avoid elliptical oscillations or we want to avoid damping by the wind. The string should make contact with the stopper. Very important. And it says measure and record the time for 20 oscillations. So we are going to oscillate the pendulum this time to 20 times. And then we would determine the period T. Then we are asked to evaluate H to the power half. Now we should know that whatever you have to the power half means the square root of the thing. So we are going to find the square root of H. And then you will repeat the procedure for four other values of H. 55 centimeters, 65 centimeters, 75 centimeters, and 85 centimeters. Then we are asked to tabulate our readings. So now that you have a fair idea, you need to put down your table. Then you do the setup and you try to fill the table. So let's try to see what we want to do for our table. We are asked to tabulate our readings at Ix. So I'm going to write Ix. And then I'll put the table of results. Because it is Ix that gives me the instruction tabulate your readings. So what is going to appear in our table? We have a length OA which is constant throughout the experiment. Once it is constant throughout the experiment, it will not appear in a table. We have not been asked to even record that one. Then we are asked to set the distance AB equals H. So H is supposed to appear in our table. So I'm going to have my first column being H. And H will be in centimeters. Mind you, the meter rule has been calibrated in centimeters. So even if the values are given to you in meters, you would have to convert to centimeters. That's very important. So I have H there. I'm going to display the bulb through a small angle. It should swing. And then I'll measure the time for 20 oscillations. So time for 20 oscillations should come. So time for 20 oscillations. Then I told you in our first practical experiment that for 
these kind of experiments, you have to repeat the timing of the oscillations. So we we'll just take the first time, it should be in second. Pick the second time, also in second. Before you pick the actual time, which will be the mean of the two. So give me time one plus time two all over two. Then I'll get my time for the oscillations. Then I'm supposed to find the period. So period T in second. How do I find period? My time divided by the number of oscillations, which is 20. Like that. Then we are asked to plot a graph of with t squared on the vertical axis and h on the horizontal axis. So t squared must appear in my table. But I also asked to evaluate h to the power half. So we're going to have So t squared in s squared. Then I will just be through with my headings. Now our values for h. It starts from 55. No, that's from 45. So 45. Point zero. We write each value to one decimal place because. The meter rule can give us readings to only one decimal place. So 45 and then 55. We have 65. We also have 75 and 85. Point zero. So that would be it for our table. Then we have to get back to the actual practical work and try to do what we are supposed to do. We will need a length of 100. You are going to tie the string to the bob. So it will be best to pick a length of, let's say, about 120 first. So I'll pick from here to there. Just give me 100. Now pick from here. That'll give me 120. Okay. Then we can take it off from there. That is 120 centimeters. Then I'm going to tie the bob to the string. You make sure you firmly tie it so that as you oscillate, it does not fall. If it falls, you have to start all over again. So you make sure you tie it firmly. Very important. So it doesn't fall at the swings. So I think we are good to go. I want to try it and see if it will fall or not. And it's not falling. It's not falling. So it's tight enough. Then I have to measure 
100 centimeters from the middle of the bulb. So I'll put the middle of the bulb at the end of the meter rule this way. Then I take the measurement to the end there. So I think I have my 100 centimeters there. Then I'll just make a mark at the end. Good. So that mark is my 100 centimeter mark. So now, if you try to follow just as I've been told, you would be able to go through the experiment, but it will take you much time. So you have to learn the tricks in going about these experiments. Now it says that you should try and then fix it and maintain the length throughout. So assuming you are obeying the instructions given to us, just as it appears, I'm going to put my string in between the split cork. making sure that the 100 mark is just beneath the split cork before I suspend. I don't want it to be hanging. I don't want it to be weighing the string down. So I will just put it on the slab there and try to suspend it. So that should be good for us. That's it. The question says we should just suspend it like this and maintain this distance from here to the middle of the bulb, 100 centimeters throughout the experiment. Then it tells me that we go and set a distance AB, 45 cm. AB is from the middle of the bulb to where I'm going to place my stopper. That means that I'll be doing some measurements. Measure 45 from the middle of the bulb to where I place the stopper. So probably you're going to take your meter rule. Try to get the distance from the middle of the bulb to where you get 45. And try to align the stopper with it. Now if you do this, after that you oscillate the pendulum. When you are through, you come back and measure again for h equals 55. So like you come and take your meter rule again, come here, measure from the middle of the bulb to where you get 55, and then adjust the stopper and put it there. That is going to be a Herculean task. And you are running against time. So what do you do? It is best you measure, you take all the measurements of h on your string. Although it's not shown like that in the question, but that's a trick you should know. So you pick all the measurements for H, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85 on the string before you mount it. Then you move the stopper along the retort stand to be in line with the markings on the string. In that case, you will be fast at the experiment. So assuming I have a mark here, I will move the stopper to get be in line with the mark. Then I can swing it. So we will take off whatever we have done, and take all the markings for H. So H starts from 45, and mind you, it's from the middle of the bulb. So from A to B, so I just put you know, the bulb there, make sure I have my 100 intact, like I, have, I did earlier on, so I have it now. So I need a mark of 45. So I come down here. The meter rule has got two readings, one facing you, and the others have been turned upside down. You always have to use the marks that are facing you directly. Okay, so I'm going to mark for 45, which will be for my H, from the middle of the bulb to this distance is 45. So I have my 45 mark there. From 45, I'm supposed to go to 55, so I move on to 55. Make sure your, your string is stout and is stretched. So 55. Then it says 65. So I move on from 55, move on to 65.
Then the stage is move on to 75. So from 65, you go on to 75. Then the last one, 85. So use your pen to do that. I'm using my marker to do that. So now I have all the markings for each. Then I will just mount or suspend the pendulum using my split cork. I want to make sure that in four. I should be sure. Okay. Now, you can see that I want the pendulum to make contact with the stopper. According to the question, it says as it swings, it should touch the stopper. So, what can I do about this situation? I can then decide to move the clamp a little bit closer. So this will really make contact. So I just loosen it up somewhere, push it inwards a little bit. You see, that's quite easy. So that as it swings, it should touch the stopper. So it goes, hits it, goes, hits it. Very important. So now, according to the question, it should hit the stopper at 45 centimeters. So I go back to my string from the bob, its center, to my first mark is 45, and that's down here. So I'll move the stopper and bring it down there. This way. Good. So now I have H being got to 45. Now we start with the oscillations. Then I have told you. An oscillation means the bulb moves from one side, goes and comes back to where it left. Then that would be one oscillation. So let's say, for example, I displace it through a small angle, maybe this way. It goes and comes back, that's one. Goes and comes back again, that would be two. Goes and comes back, that would be three. Then we're doing for 20 oscillations. And we repeat it for each length. All right, so also then done, we can start with our first set of oscillations. Mind you, with a stopwatch, you press once for start, press the same place for stop. Then if you want to start all over again, you go to reset. So let's try and see. Now I displace it and then I start my stopwatch. So go one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. There's this temptation. If you're not careful, you might be going to hold the ball instead of stopping the stopwatch. So what I have here is 003389. So this will be recorded as 33.89 seconds. That will be our first time for our first 20 oscillations. All right, so I have 33.89. So I will reset and I will do it again for the next another 20 oscillations. So we start. I start 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 
14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now I have 33.96 seconds. So I'm still within my 33 seconds. That is why you need to repeat the timing for the oscillations to avoid random errors. To avoid random errors. All right. So now I'll change I'll change the distance of the stopper from the middle of the bulb. It says 55. And that's a good thing. I've already done the markings on the string. So what do I do? Let's move the stopper upwards to that length. So that's my 55th mark. My stopper is there. And easily, I start my set of oscillations. So we go. Start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now I have 35.09 as my reading. 35.09. That's my reading. So... I have 35.09 seconds as the reading. 35.09. 35.09 as a reading. Okay. So, you try it for the second one. Ready? You start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20. Then we stop. Now I have 35.19. 35.19 as my reading. Then I'll have to go and adjust the length. Of my stopper from the middle of the bulb. The next length is 65. So that'll be 65. Then we see. This one will be a make or break. Why? We need to get a trend, which I'll explain to you as we go on. So let's try this one and see what we get. So I'm going to start my oscillations. Start, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, then 20. Now, I have 
point eight seven. Three seven point eight seven. Let me pick the second one and see what I can conclude on. So I will reset and I'll start all over again and let's see. So I displace and then I start. Start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now I have three six point seven six as my reading. Now, when you have done three out of five, go back to your readings and check whether you have a trend or not. If you don't have a trend in readings, then there's a problem which you have to address. 33, 35, 37, 36. It looks like as age increases, the timing of oscillation also increases as you go down. That is a trend. Once you find a trend, it means that you should you can predict that the next lens will give something what that is more than 37 and more than 30, or maybe 37 or more. If you should go back to something 30 less than 37, then there's a problem with those lens, and you have to take time and go through the experiment for those lens again. So once I see a trend, I'm happy because I know I'm on the right path. All right, so we can move on to the next one, which says 75. So you move your stopper to the 75th mark, and then we do as we've been doing, we oscillate. Okay, so it's at the 75th mark. Then I'll reset, and then we can start. So start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20. Good. So I have 38.13. It should not be less than 37. If it's less than 8, then there is a problem. So I have 38.13 seconds. Reset. We stop it. Then displace and start. So start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. All right, so that's giving me 38.15. Then we move on to the last one, which is 85. So I change. And move on to 85. And I expect that we should get something above 88 seconds. Or more than 88.15 as I have there. 
Okay, so we can now displace and we start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, and then 20. Good. I have 39.33. 39.33 to be a value. So 39.33. Then we can take the last one. Okay. So I displace it, then I start on stopwatch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I have 39.07. 39.07. That's our reading. So much of our work has been done. We have been able to oscillate for 20 oscillations for each of the lengths for each. We've been able to put down our values for the oscillations. So all we need to do now is to try and fill the table. We have the mean of the time. So we pick each of them, we add, and we divide by 2. So that should be it for this section of our practical work. We've learned how to mount up the pendulum, how to place the stopper where it's supposed to be, how to get the, get the measurements on the string before we mount the pendulum. Then we've gone through the oscillations and we did repeat the timing for the oscillations for each length. This will be a nice time to say goodbye. In our next lesson, we will try and complete what we started doing and find out how to go about drawing the graph and answering the other questions also posed to us. So it's been great having you here on Senior High School R, Joy Learning Television. And Nekwabi Albert is my name. You can call me Pius. I'll come your way another time. Until then, all the best. See you again. It's bye for now. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.